According to the CDC, more than 12,000 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer each year in the U.S. and around 4,000 of them die from it. Jumi Olabanji introduces us to one local woman who survived this cancer and is now living to make sure that those numbers go down. When it comes to gynecologic cancers, perhaps cervical cancer is the one that's being talked about the most. We hear so much about HPV and how it can cause the disease in young women. Today, we bring you one woman's story and how she says it can happen to anyone. What did you guys do upstairs with daddy? You played trucks? Oliver and Roman are the joy of their mother, Danielle Nall's life. She had the twins just a few months before she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. A month later, I had a radical hysterectomy. Danielle says she knew something was wrong when she had random bleeding not associated with her monthly period. At first, doctors didn't know it was cancer. I walked out of that office knowing that I was misdiagnosed. I knew something was was wrong and I think I just didn't want to believe it. Even more confusing, Danielle's pap smear came back clean. What wasn't clear at first is that her type of cancer, adenosquamous carcinoma, is very rare. So it was an aggressive, um, fast-growing cancer, which is why I had a clean pap smear just six months earlier. According to the Foundation for Women's Cancer, most forms of cervical cancer are slow-growing and non-aggressive, which is why doctors say it's so important for women to get regular pap smears. We now know that HPV is the cause of potentially a lot of uh, devastating cancers that, again, if caught early, um, can be curative. After her surgery, Danielle had several rounds of both chemotherapy and radiation. She finished her treatment in March and is looking forward to living a cancer-free life. As hard as the days are with two and a half year old twins, um, I am so, so grateful that I have them. Danielle is sharing her story so that women will be their own advocate, getting their annual exams and listening to their bodies. Still, there is a stigma with some women's cancers, um, you know, as far as coming forward and talking about them. And that is, that's got to change or else, um, you know, this is going to continue to take women's lives. Danielle will be participating in the race to end women's cancer, and you can join her and other women on November 3rd in the district. Jumio Labanji, ABC 7 News.